Minecraft 1.21 is insanely broken. And I'm not even talking about this thing. We already know how much damage you've done to the community. And I do mean literal damage. But today we're talking about the one thing in 1.21 that I think is truly going to break Minecraft. And that is these four new potions right here. The potion of wind charging, the potion of weaving, the potion of oozing, and the potion of infestation. Now to be honest with you, the infestation potion is kind of useless and worthless and I don't care about it. But these last three potions, I think, are genuinely going to be the breaking point of Minecraft. And I say think because I think this one will get to it first. But that is a whole different discussion because these three potions, we're gonna do some crazy things with them. And if you didn't notice in the background, right over there, I have a giant mob farm. Basically, we're gonna let this run for a second. So while this farm runs in the background and I leave you in mystery about why we're actually doing it, I am going to tell you a couple things. And the first thing is that these three potions are extremely easy to make. For some reason, a lot of people think that whenever you kill a breeze, you get wind charges, but you actually get breeze rods that you then turn into wind charges. And you can actually use these rods not only to make the new mace item, but also to make a brand new potion. This potion, as you probably guessed, is, of course, the potion of wind charging. The next one is pretty self-explanatory, but you take a cobweb, you put it in the brewing stand, and as you probably expected, we get the potion of weaving. And finally, if you take a slime block and put it inside of a brewing stand, you won't believe what potion we get. That's right, you guessed it. Potion of oozing. Now, a lot of you are probably wondering, what do these potions actually do? And I'm about to show you why they're so broken. First thing we're going to do is set the time today and we are going to go make a hole up here. Don't mind me. And finally, we are going to look down. Oh, that's a lot of creepers. But we're going to take our handy dandy diamond sword and we are going to enchant it with sweeping edge three. Now, because of the way this mob farm is built, basically all the mobs fall down this chamber and they get to exactly half a heart so you can one shot them with your sweeping edge three sword. I will just also put sharpness on it just, just in case. I, I meant for that to be sharpness five, but if you try and do it now, it, it just doesn't work, so... I guess we have sharpness one, but basically we're going to open this up. Okay, there was one more creeper. That's a bit unfortunate, but now if we throw out a potion, and remember, you can do all this in vanilla Minecraft. Hopefully now, whenever we do this. <laughs> yep, that's vanilla Minecraft. It actually wasn't nearly as strong as I thought it would be. But at the same time, that was a lot less mobs than I thought there would be. Though I think you got the general idea. Let me try and make a better example for you. We are currently at the bottom of the Minecraft world. We are at Y-63, the lowest we can go, and we are going to go thousands of blocks in the air. And all we're going to do is place a couple chickens. Once they start decramming, and you can jump down and they don't die, you throw down your potion of wind charging, you jump in, and now you fly. We are at Y 550 and we've stopped from the bottom of the world in a one by one box and we're going back down all the way. Caves and cliffs. I tried to use the mob farm as kind of an example that you could do this like, quite easily, but then again, why don't you just breed a bunch of chickens? I mean, what's the worst that could happen? And we're going to peak any moment now. 2290 something, I think. And now we're going back down. So I'm pretty sure that you get what I'm trying to say here. Where did I land? What? I have somehow managed to land several hundred blocks in the wrong direction? I have absolutely no clue where I was, but anyways. Here, I'll make it more realistic for you. Let's get some seeds out and start breeding. Look at all of these wonderful chickens. This takes like 20 seconds to do in Minecraft, all right? This is not that far off from vanilla. I say vanilla, but I really mean survival mode. I don't know why I say vanilla. My brain just defaults to that. We are just using spawn to speed it up, all right? But now I'm going to go into the game of survival. I'm going to drop the potion. I'm going to put on my elytra, and then I'm going to fly. I mean, look at this. Do you even need rockets? You just breed some chickens. Look, we're at Y1720. I can just fly forever. In fact, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep flying until I stop. And we're going to see how far all of those chickens made us go. That is, if my Unbreaking 3 Elytra doesn't break before then, which it might actually do. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Stop going down. No, 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 no. I am giving myself a water bucket so I can attempt to clutch if my Elytra does break. We'll, we'll, we'll be fine, right? We are not going down at what I would call a steep rate. In fact, we are going quite far right now. You kind of got to get an angle where your feet aren't quite doing the little jiggle 
because that means you're starting to lose momentum and we want to go fast and far. I do think I overreacted a bit. I think the Elytra will be fine, but I will go ahead and time lapse this for you. Enjoy. Now, when I started this, I didn't think I'd even go this far. This took like 10 minutes of just waiting, and honestly, it was really funny. While we're here though, if you want to subscribe- I'm kidding, I'm not going to do that. Let's get back to the video now. Okay, we are nearing the floor. I can kind of see the world rendering at the bottom. Oh, here it comes. Oh my god, we are 15,000 blocks out. That one potion! 15,000 blocks, plus whatever I spent setting up, plus whatever I spent just staring at you. Whoa. What the? There's a village here, I'm not even going to have to clutch. There's ocean. Ironically enough, we started at an ocean, and we are going to land right about... Come on, draw it out. Here. Oh my god, the elytra took half its durability. Oh, well, not quite, actually. One breeze charge, one potion, got us 16,500 blocks from spawn. I, I don't even know what to say. That is just ridiculous. Anyways, I'm too lazy to type anything out, so, uh, in fact, we started at around 7180, so yeah, about 16,300 blocks. That's ridiculous. And all you have to do is have either a basic mob farm or, like, a chicken pen. That's it. That's everything you need. The next potion I think we're going to be tackling is actually going to be the potion of oozing, because I think this one has the most potential to break everything. We're actually going to use the chickens as the example again, because we're only going to spawn a few here. But if you throw the potion of oozing, and then you kill something, it drops slime. Like a lot of slime. Look at this. There's so many. Oh my god. How many chickens was that? We just got a stack in 24 slime. One slime block, which is nine slime, makes three potions. I don't even have looting. That's just the normal drop rate. To make it more interesting, let's use a different mob. Actually, let's use the new bogged mob. Everyone's seen the breeze, and honestly, I think the bogged is really cool. Oh, he's on fire. That's my bad. But like, look how awesome he looks. You cannot yell at Mojang anymore. This is awesome. Oh, and by the way, to everyone who yells at Mojang for not making the largest update in gaming history every single Minecraft update, please just shut up. Like, genuinely, I could probably go on for hours about how awesome these updates are and why you should be appreciating them, the Minecraft's a complete game. They don't necessarily need some crazy updates every single version. But anyways, my meaningless rants aside, hopefully this works out. I'm a bit concerned because the slime kind of went into the walls last time. So I'm kind of hoping... Okay, they just fly out. <laughs> oh my god, it's raining slime. No, no. Oh, there's slime everywhere. Oh, oh, this is a mess. I didn't think I'd have to do this, but I think I do. I need to make a farm. And most devastatingly, I have to make an original farm. I don't think I've seen a single person use any of these potions on a farm, and it's honestly surprising because they are just broken. Wait, can we see the slimes spawn in as we go down? Where'd all the slimes go? Or do they all drown? I mean, there's certainly slime here. Anyways, I think what we'll do is we'll actually make a chamber for the individual mobs. We'll kill them, the slimes will pop out the walls, and then they'll go down into a different chamber where we'll kill them with looting. One quick thing I should mention while I'm building this is that whenever you kill a mob, that has the actual effect, it is always guaranteed to drop two medium slimes. No more, no less. So we should actually be able to get an exact estimate of how much slime we'll have. I mean, obviously, looting and luck because of how drop rates work matters, but I'm pretty sure with looting, it's guaranteed you get more than a slime block with one potion, meaning that with one slime block, you have a three times return rate because you have three potions to use. Probably more than that because I just got seven slime balls and I don't have any looting at all. But instead of using one mob, we're going to be using dozens. So for example, if we were to have 10 mobs killed with the potion effect, they would be guaranteed to drop 20 medium slimes. So I mean, in theory, this is all relatively simple and hope this should be a quick and easy one. So the idea is that we have our bogged, we throw the potion. Of course, it can be any mob. It doesn't have to be bogged. We kill it. The slimes pop out. Okay, one of them did. That's fine. And hopefully, he should slide 
right into the kill chamber. Oh, that's a problem. Oh, is he too large to fit? Ah, oh, that's annoying. Oh, and it started raining as well. Oh, everything's a mess. After some quick and minorly painful adjustments, Hopefully now the farm should be fully active. Let's get rid of this weather. No one wants the rain here. And as you can now see from about 20 blocks in the sky, I've put a singular slab so our bogs don't burn. This is Minecraft physics and I love it. There's no reason for it to be that high. I just felt like it. But now, hopefully, whenever we spawn all of our bogged... Actually, I'm, I'm gonna raise this wall one block because I am not confident that the slimes are gonna stay in. I actually take that back entirely. I'm raising it two blocks. I am not confident in the slightest bit. I would go in survival mode for this, but the bogged will just start shooting at me and they have poison arrows and it's all annoying. So let's just throw one potion, by the way. This is one potion out of three. And let's go ahead and kill the bogged. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's wonderful. Oh, look at that. I'll oh, get down there. Well, oh, there's only like four slime left over. A couple died in there, but honestly, that's fine. Look at this. There's so many. I should have checked the entity counter, but let's go down here. There's so many slimes here. Let's give our sword looting three. I didn't add any hoppers, so we're going to have to just manually check. But now I think they're all about in. These little strays will get in there eventually. I have no slime on me whatsoever. We can go ahead and grab the slime here. And this slime here. I don't know how slime got up there. We can throw away all the bows and arrows and whatnot because we do not care. But now we can kill all of our slimes, which have become children because of entity cramming. And hopefully we should get a really, really good amount of slime. I'm not quite sure how many bog that was, but you can do this with literally any mob. So I'm not quite concerned. And I think that's all of them. So now if we go in, oh my God, we have four stacks of slime balls. I didn't actually notice this before, but as it turns out, this also gives XP, so not only is this infinite slime, but it's also infinite XP, because you can use the potion on the mobs. Am I gonna be the one to check the individual drop rates of every single slime, and then count how many I killed? Heck no, but feel free to do it. This is how much slime I started with, and 21 of it was from baby slimes that just died on their own without looting, so all of this came from looting, this did not. But I think I've proven my point. This came from three slime balls effectively because you have the nine from one block and then you get three potions so you can divide this into three different groups which of course would be three per potion funny enough this is actually exactly 250 slime and if you divide this by the number that takes for one slime block nine you get a return rate of 27.8 times the number of slime that means that you start with this number you multiply it by 27.8 and then you get your output. Of course, for a real number of how much slime per bottle of this potion you get, you'll have to like have control factors like how many mobs you used, how many slimes you killed with looting. But this, on a random test, that's ridiculous. Imagine you're playing your survival world and you happen to have nine slime lying around, but you need a lot more. Imagine making it into a single potion, killing some chickens, and then suddenly getting 27.8 times the number of slime you started with. And some people think the mace is the only crazy thing in this update. But now it is of course time for our final test, the potion of weaving. Now rather than use the chicken test, because chickens are a very, very weak mob, we will actually use something a bit stronger. How about one ravager? Never mind, he is dying in the hole. We need something smaller. Take my word on this one, the panda was also way too big. How about just a simple husk? Basically, we're gonna throw the potion weaving onto it, and now, whenever you hit it, there's a chance for a web to appear. Where is the web? I thought there was supposed to be a chance. Oh, it's whenever it dies. I could have sworn it was based on hit, but that might have been the potion of infestation, which is utterly useless. Uh, very quickly, I'm just curious, so we're actually just gonna check. We're gonna hit him a couple times, and he... It doesn't seem to be dropping anything. Anyways, what I was trying to say, the potion of weaving, whenever you kill something, it drops cobwebs. I believe it's like a chance of one to three, but essentially we can make an infinite cobweb farm because if we use our shears in this cobweb, of course, we get a cobweb back. And once again, Mojang not knowing how numbers work, one cobweb is three potions. At least I can only assume they don't know how it works because this is just infinite resource farming. Who knows, maybe Mojang loves unbalanced features that nobody asked for. Oh wait, sorry, sorry, I'm not gonna get off topic, I'm not gonna complain about the mace, I swear, I'm not gonna do it, I promised I wouldn't. Let's talk about the potion. Because I've actually had an idea for a farm for this potion for a long time. This one was makeshift, 
but this next one, I think we're gonna get down. Basically, my first idea is that we make one big box and then we kill a mob. That was a terrible explanation. What I mean is that hopefully the cobwebs can just kind of spawn in the empty space or just on the walls, and hopefully the cobwebs can't like delete each other because that would make things a lot more annoying. Also, I'm shooting a new sword with a good sharpness. But let's go ahead and do the chicken test. It didn't spawn any cobwebs? What the? Is it because it's dying in the air? The chickens just not drop the webs? Hold on, let's kill a husk with it. What? Can we also talk about how awful the sound effect is? Like, I know it's, it's like, oh, it's more realistic. Oh, but it, yeah. It's like scraping chalk against a chalkboard. Ugh. Anyways, I am thoroughly confused as to what's happening here because that didn't spawn a web either. Is it because the game is registering that there's no place for webs to spawn? Maybe it's because they're dying in the corner. I've now made a smite five sword so I can one-shot the husk. Does it not spawn them on stone? So I'm reading the Minecraft wiki and it just says that it creates one cobweb on death, though I think could have sworn we just saw something drop two cobwebs. Oh, it was just the puff. But can it not spawn them while they're under stone? But I think I heard it. Yeah, they're out here. There's two of them. Is the Minecraft wiki wrong? Did I find a second thing it's wrong about? That one didn't drop any. That one didn't drop any. That one dropped too! The Minecraft wiki's wrong! This is the second time that I have found something wrong with the Minecraft wiki, and the first one was also in a snapshot. Okay, we're gonna have to do a lot of tests here because I want to know exactly how many cobwebs these things can make. That's two. For my testing, the weaving effect has the chance to drop zero to two cobwebs. No more, no less. I mean, obviously, it's not gonna take cobwebs away, that'd be weird. But again, I just cannot figure out why they refuse to drop cobwebs when I killed him in the box. Well, there's one right there. Whoa, they're spawning now? I am so very confused. Did I just get insanely unlucky when I was killing them inside the chamber? I think I just got insanely unlucky. That was a little bit of a sidetrack, but I do need to fill in these corners so they don't accidentally spawn outside the box. But my thought process is pretty much the same as the slime. Oh, they're babies. No, there's so many. Oh, ew. Okay, we're not gonna use husks because they keep spawning babies. Let's go back to the bog, back to the classics. So now if we do this... Okay, that's not as much cobwebage as I thought there'd be. From what I see, the cobwebs can only spawn on top of a solid block. Because my next question is how does the game react to me placing signs? So I guess let's just go ahead and place all of our bogged and then hopefully this works. Okay, it looks like they don't want to spawn on signs. How does the game feel about gates? I think we've opened them all. Now I'm going to leave this half closed just because I want to know if it can spawn on the closed ones and the open ones, or just one of them. So once again, we'll spawn in a ton of bog, throw the potion down, and then... Ooh. So the webs also don't want to spawn on fences, which is quite annoying. So now we need to find another half-solid block that maybe will work. I think the last one on my list is going to be trapdoors. We can use some of the new copper trapdoors. So we'll make some of the top ones so they act as though they are normal block. And some of them the bottom ones where they kind of just break everything. And let's just see where it goes, I guess. Let's do the potion. Okay. They can spawn on the top ones, which I assumed would happen. But I'm guessing they cannot spawn on the bottom ones, though I guess... We could have just gotten unlucky. No, you cannot get them on the bottom ones. The real question is, can you get them on the top ones 
while they're open. Oh, I don't think they can. Hold on, just to be sure, let's open this side or close them, I guess. Oh, they can't. I wonder if Mojang's actually put like thought into this and stopped them from spawning on anything besides full solid blocks or if they quite literally just pasted full solid block into the code. I'm not sure if it's that simple, but I'm going to assume it is. If I'm being 100% honest, I don't think the trapdoor thing helped us very much. I didn't actually need to know that. I was just interested. But now that we know there's no very good way to fill up this empty space, I think I have a full design idea. We have about 50 here. I'm not quite sure how many are like other entities and how many are just the bog. We have about 50. Now, I think you just want to get a platform as wide as possible because it seems to simply be based off of how many solid blocks are available and we want to get rid of as much closed space as possible these corners don't actually matter so honestly let's just do this so now we have a hollow box that in theory we just want to keep stacking so if we make this here and we build around all we need is as many spawn locations as possible and for convenience i will place a trap door right here so we can easily get in and out all i have to do is go down here and now we can come get all the cobwebs and then go back out quickly and now right to the side we need to crawl in here and open this up hopefully it'll extend down to all the layers but let's go ahead and break this block we can throw our weaving potion down go down here okay I heard a lot of noise. Let's go down and hope that it worked. First of all, the top layer is empty, but I do see the middle layer actually got quite a bit. It looks like this top layer doesn't work though, so we do know the range extents, which means I didn't actually have to go into the block down, which is nice. But if we use trapdoor here, we got 14 cobwebs. In this layer, we have 30. Oh, there's exactly 15 per layer. And let's see this layer, which did also get some 41 cobwebs. Wow, that is a lot of cobwebs. It's actually not quite a one-to-one -one on the bogs, actually. That sounds like we got less cobwebs than we had bogs. But remember, that's one potion, which is one cobweb. And again, I could just be doing this as chickens right now. That is all I have for this video, because I have shown all the overpowered properties of these three potions, not including infestation, because it sucks. But there is one more thing I'd like to try before we go. So now hopefully if we do this... It should start spawning some chickens, and I don't quite know how many chickens it'll be, but I do know that if we do this and turn off mob sounds because that is just way too loud, we throw a couple of these in here, turn on our sounds for a second, game mode survival. Oh, my game has frozen. I can't, I can't move. My, my keys don't work. There's so much chicken in my, my, my keys don't work. <gasps> <laughs> I'm 27,000 blocks in the air. <laughs> Why is it so dark up here? Oh my god. Oh, oh, I'm back. Oh, I'm back. I have really got to finish this outro before I go back to the shadow dimension. So please like and subscribe. It does mean a lot and it really adds up and I really appreciate it. With that, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. <gasps> Bye. No, I'm in the shadow dimension again.